guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie. So I'm here today with part four of my Romeo and Juliet series. We are on to act two, scenes four and five. So, scene four. This is where Juliet is currently waiting in her family's orchard for the nurse to arrive who she sent to meet Romeo like three hours earlier. So when the nurse actually arrives, Juliet anxiously presses her for news, but the nurse claims she's too tired and too sore to tell Juliet actually what happened. Essentially, she's really teasing Juliet, which shows a sort of mother and daughterly relationship the two of them have. Um, so then the nurse does tell Juliet that Romeo is currently waiting for her at Friar Lawrence's cell. So that's scene four. Then on to scene five, where Romeo and Friar Lawrence wait for Juliet to arrive. And Romeo is ecstatic and brashly states that he does not care what misfortune, ha, huh, misfortune, might come as it will pale in comparison to the joy he's currently feeling. As an audience member, we know what misfortune is going to happen. So this is usually where in the play that we cringe. Um, it's a testament to William Shakespeare as we should really be with Romeo just now feeling the same joy that he's feeling due to the fact that he's getting married to the love of his life but we know it's not going to end well so we don't share in that joy that he's feeling. And Friar Lawrence essentially in this scene is basically us as an audience because he consults Romeo to love moderately and not with too much intensity saying these violent delights have violent ends. Juliet then enters and Romeo asks her to speak poetically of her love for him. Juliet then responds with, those who can easily describe their worth are beggars. Um, her love is far too great to be easily described. They then leave with Friar Lawrence and are wed. So, in conclusion, basically this is where I analyse both scenes. Throughout these scenes, Shakespeare emphasises the thrilling joy of young romantic love. Romeo and Juliet are electric with anticipation. In a wonderfully comic scene, I think, Juliet can barely contain herself when the nurse pretends to be too tired to give her news. Romeo is equally excited, brashly and blasphemously proclaiming his love is the most powerful force in the world. And back then, obviously, that was blasphemous. It wouldn't be really now, but religion is like, was so big back in like Shakespeare's time that that was kind of blasphemous. Just like when Shakespeare wrote plays like about, you know, king, whatever king was like there at the time, that was almost blasphemous, like Richard III was sort of a kind of controversial play at the time because obviously that was very new to everybody, like that was quite recent to everybody so everyone was like oh why is he writing a play about that and it's kind of controversial. Um, though the euphoria of love clearly dominates these two scenes, some ominous foreshadowing is revealed. The nurse's joking game in which she delays telling Juliet the news will actually find its sad mother in a future scene um, when the nurse's anguish prevents her from like relating news to Juliet that thereby causes terrible conf confusion and a hu it's a huge misunderstanding and miscommunication and um, if I think if the nurse had told Juliet the news earlier, maybe we wouldn't have a tragedy, but this is why it's a tragedy. A more profound foreshadowing exists in the friar's observation, like I said uh, just there. We all know that the play is a tragedy and that Romeo and Juliet will die, so Friar Lawrence's words are more than just a difference of opinion with Romeo. They reinforce the presence and power of fate, which we know is a very, very heavy theme throughout this whole play. Fate plays a whole thing especially in whole, the whole of Romeo and Juliet's relationship and how they came together. It was all fate and fate is a humongous thing with this. Friar Lawrence's devotion to moderation is interesting in that it differs um, and offers also an alternative to the way in which all the other characters in the play live their lives. From Romeo to Tybalt and Montague to Capulet. Every character follows passion and forsakes moderation. The friar criticises this way of acting and feeling, noting its destructiveness. 
Fire Lawrence is most certainly correct. Uh, but after expanding his belief, the friar gets himself embroiled in all of the excess and passion he consol consoles or consults against. The passion of young love might be destructive, but it's also exquisitely beautiful. Um, if Romeo and Juliet were moderate in their affection for each other, their love would not strike such a chord with us as um, an audience, really. So yeah, that's it. Kind of two quick scenes, but uh, I think next time, next month, we're on to uh, the sort of gritty bit of the play. Um, this has been kind of plain sailing just now, but you just wait till next month when it kind of hits you that this is a tragedy. Um, and join me on Monday where I am going to review Suicide Squad! I'm going to go see it on Friday, hopefully at the cinema. I'm so, so freaking excited to see Suicide Squad. I might actually cry. I'm so, I just want to go see Suicide Squad so much! So I'm hopefully going to see it on Friday, but you will get the review on Monday and I will see you then. Bye.